Good morning. It's good to be with you again. Today we're going to continue our study of the children of Israel wandering in the desert, getting ready eventually to make their way into the promised land. Forty years God has promised they're going to wait in the wilderness, considering how important it is to listen to God and the promises that he makes. As they're wandering in the desert, for 40 years, they're going to come into a lot of contact with the people of the area. On the map, I kind of put some of these, these people. Now, these boundary lines are by no means accurate, and they were always shifting, but this kind of helps me picture where these people were and how the Israelites may have come into contact with them. You have the Edomites, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Amorites, and the kingdom of Bashan. Now, the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites, God had previously said in Deuteronomy chapter 2, do not invade them, attack them, or in any way oppose them, because he had already given these lands to certain people. The Edomites, that was the descendants of Esau. God had promised them a nation. The Moabites and the Ammonites, those were the descendants of Lot. God had promised them a nation. And I think it's interesting um, and obvious, perhaps it should be, that God is not just working with the children of Israel. He's working with the people of, of the world in, in, entirely. And here's evidence of that. But it's the children of Israel that we tend to focus on because that's what the scriptures talk about. Now, the Amorites and the Bashanites. The Amorites, God had been dealing with too. Perhaps you remember back in Genesis, we talked about how God had said to Abraham, your descendants are going to be slaves in the land for 400 years, and then I will bring them out because the sin of the Amorites had not yet reached its full measure. Back then, God was dealing with the Amorites. But now their time was up, and they will be kicked out. So Israel is, is wandering, staying clear of Edom, Moab, Ammon, but the Amorites and the kingdom of Bashan, they are afraid. You get two million people wandering in the desert, heading in your direction, and they preemptively strike. Amorites should have been listening to God. That was kind of the whole story. They weren't. And as they struck against the Israelites, they lost. Now, keep in mind, it's two million people. These weren't soldiers. Uh, these had been slaves and shepherds, brickmakers. But God miraculously hands the Amorites over to them. And also with the kingdom of Bashan. God had promised that whoever opposes them will be opposing God and will lose. And here we see that. Of course, now, Balaam, or Balak, the king of Moab, sees Israel and is afraid. Even though they had graciously bypassed Moab, Balak is afraid of what they might do. And so Balak summons one of the prophets of God to come and curse them. Now, here's where we're going to get to the main lesson for today. And I want to read you a portion of scripture which should have applied to Balaam, the prophet of God, and of course does apply to us. This is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. It's Paul's encouragement to this young pastor, preacher, Timothy, but it's one that we can all take to heart. He says, The time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. It's God's word. If I could summarize very briefly, listen to what God says. Don't put words in God's mouth. There are going to be people who do that for many reasons. Uh, Balaam was one of those. As we read on, Balaam shows that his character was wanting. He was a prophet who did prophesy for God, but was willing to change what he said to fit the surrounding audience and make a few bucks. Be like a preacher today who changes what he preaches so that he can fill the seats, make people happy, maybe make some more money. It happens. It's not good, but it happens. To change God's word to make more people happy. That's what Balak was hoping Balaam would do, would come and put curses upon the nation of Israel. Now, God's going to bless what he blesses. We can't change God's word and expect him to, to go with it. But that's often what people think. Now, Balaam had the character to do that, but God comes to Balaam and he says, you go to Balak. You go ahead to Balak, but do not say anything that I didn't tell you to say. You only tell him what I tell you to say. And so Balaam goes. 
Balaam goes toward Moab to Balak, but as he's on his way, an angel appears with a sword ready to strike him down. Why? Because God had looked into his heart and he realized where Balaam was going to go. And he was going to kill Balaam. Balaam didn't see the angel, though. He couldn't see the angel. Only his donkey could see the angel. And this gets interesting, but bear with me. The donkey can see the angel, and so the donkey turns to the right and turns to the left, even crushes Balaam's leg against a wall, and Balaam starts to beat the donkey for not listening to him. And the donkey turns around and says to Balaam, Why are you beating me? I have been your faithful donkey for all of these years. True story. The donkey talks to Balaam because the donkey knows what Balaam doesn't. Listen to God. And God gives this donkey the ability to translate or to, to give that message to Balaam. I remember back in the seminary, there was a professor once who looked at us in the midst of a lesson. He kind of shakes his head and, and refers to this. And he said, boys, if God could talk to a donkey, he might be able to use you too. Of course, I, don't, I think he used a different word than donkey, but it applied. You know, if, if God can speak these words through a donkey, he can speak them through us. The prayer, though, is that we have the same wisdom of that donkey. To, to say what God says, to see what God sees, and, and not, not change it because other people might want us to change it, because it's more palatable, because it's more lucrative. Say what God has to say, because that is what God is going to bless. Believe what God has taught, because in that are the blessings of God. Amen. And we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for all of the promises that you give us and the guidance that you give us. We ask that you bless us, give us the strength to obey, the strength to follow, um, and, and to see your blessings as they come. Today we also pray for our brother Harold, Harold Glaw, who was admitted to the hospital for for a number of procedures, emergency procedures that needed to be done, the first of which was done very successfully. We thank you for this. And we ask that the procedures yet to follow, um, you give the doctor's skill as well, that you heal him and return him to his life, return him home, allow him to soon, very soon, hopefully, get together with his family again. And we ask that you bless us all as we wait for relief from this pandemic, as we wait to see what tomorrow will bring, help us to see your hand and your blessings in it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, tomorrow we're going to pick up with this. Um, I just kind of stopped it with the donkey. A lot more to follow, so please stay tuned. And again, we are having church this Sunday on a limited basis. Please look online for more details under the COVID-19 updates. Three services we're having, 8, 10, and 12. And uh, you can sign up. It's very important to sign up. And uh, please share this with anybody who might not get this. I really do not want to ever have to turn somebody away at the door, but if everybody just simply shows up, we're trying to keep it at 50 to keep everybody healthy, so please, please, uh, we're all working together. Let's do that. God be with you.